So we're going to be looking at transformations as the main topic of this unit. And in the video, we're just going to look at an overview of what some transformations are. And then in class, we'll look a little bit more in depth at one specific one, which is called a translation today. OK, so what is a transformation? So obviously, you guys probably know what it means to transform. You've probably seen transformers go from a car to a big robot and back. Um, and geometry is, transformation is similar to that idea where it's a change. And it's basically when a figure has a change in its position, size, or shape. Uh. That's a comma. And it can also be a combination of a bunch of these things. So we're going to look at what um, three basic transformations are. And um, in this unit, we're going to be looking at four different ones. And today, we're going to be looking at what's called a translation. So before we look at the type of movement or change that happened, let's look at this bolder outline of this quadrilateral as the original shape. And then the arrow points to the transformed uh, shape. And let's give these points um, the vertices names. We'll call this A, B, C, D. All right. And we'll start with the same basic shape for each one of these. And then we want to see what happened to A, B, C, D. So if you take a look at the first image, right, this first, first pair of pictures, what happened? Well, what I'm seeing is it just slid over, right? It slid a little far. It slid to the right and then went down a little bit. Um, and that is what's called a translation. And that's going to be the focus of our notes in class. OK, so it's uh, basically it moves all the points in a figure the same distance and in the same direction. Okay, and I like to think of this one as a slide, all right? If you take a look at the number two, we've got this pairing here, and what happened to that A, B, C, D? Well, it flipped, right? This flip is what is called a reflection. You know, my lines don't quite line up, so um, just kind of make do with what you, the best you can, all right? So this is number two, that's number one. So this is called a reflection. And again, it's when the figure flips over a certain line or across. So if you look at number two, um, imagine there's this vertical line, right, cutting the distance between each of the points in half. And that's that line that's the shape's been flipped over. OK, and that's called a line of reflection. And then number three, if you take a look at this, what happened? So it's moving, but it's also looking like it's turning. And that turn is called a rotation. So number three, rotation. So it's when the figure turns about a specific point. So it's kind of like when we're using our compass and you have the point right there in the center and then the rest, the pencil goes around it. That's what we mean by turning about a specific point. So there's some point, you know, somewhere, and I'll just arbitrarily draw one, right, that everything is going around in this case. And that's what a rotation is. Okay. And then we have some vocabulary below. So we have what's called a pre-image and an image. So we want to be very, very careful with the way we talk about the before and the after. So the pre-image is the original shape or the original figure. Or I like to think about it as the before, right? And the image is the after or what happens after the transformation. So it's the resulting figure. 
let me make that a little bit easier to read. So this is, again, the resulting figure. To help you distinguish between the pre-image and the image, we also have special notation. So we want to map the pre-image point to the image point. So again, you'll hear that word map, meaning they correspond. So for example, A is this little tiny point on the left in number one. Then when we moved it to the right and down, A is still this tiny little point, right? This angle on the left, but we don't wanna be confused and say, well, that's A and A. We're gonna call this A prime with a little apostrophe, okay? So B maps to B prime, C to C prime, and D to D prime, right? So we wanna make sure we're very careful putting the primes where they correspond, um, right, in the image, considering where they started in the pre-image. And the translations are the easiest because they stay in the same orientation, but everything else could move the orientation uh, well, everything else we talk about today, reflections and rotations, would change the orientation. So again, A prime would be that smallest angle, and then we have B prime, C prime, and D prime. Sometimes you'll see a transformation that doesn't necessarily go from A to A prime. It might map A to X or A to Z. Um, but again, we want to make sure when that happens, you're still looking for the corresponding shapes or the corresponding sp spots. Okay? So that's some vocabulary that I would want you guys to be able to recognize, use, and understand. So again, pre-image, image, translation, refle reflection, rotation, and then explaining how you know, you know, transformation, specific transformation. And then the other vocabulary you want us to look at today is what's called an isometry, all right? So what does it mean to be isometric or have an isometry? So an isometry is basically a transformation where the pre-image and image have the same size and shape. So it doesn't matter if we turn it, we flip it, we move it around, it just has to maintain the same size and shape, which you'll remember is what we talk about when we talk about congruent. And this is something to think about when we start proving, you know, figures are congruent. If you want to think about it in terms of a transformation, we can always use transformations to show that shapes are congruent because um, when they're when it's an isometry, okay? So taking a look at A, B, and C, I'd like you to tell me which of these are an isometry and why. So hopefully you saw the only one that was an isometry, pretty clear, it's A. Um, I labeled the pre-image and image so you guys can see. B might not have been as clear because you'll see it's being flipped, but it just flipped up. That's what that means. Um, but you'd want to identify what's the pre-image and what's the image. So you want to make sure you're looking at which the, where the arrows are pointing. and. Um, Again, being able to determine if it's an isometry, it's going to be important when we start thinking about congruence. Okay, and then we're going to finish this together in class looking at one specific transformation, and that is the translation. And one thing I want you to note if we talk about isometries, um, all three transformations that we brought up today, translations, reflections, and rotations, by themselves or a combination of these three will always be isometric. So when we get to congruence, you can always think about transformations to create congruence by using these three transformations. Okay, so um, let me know if you have questions on the vocabulary when we come back to class, and then we'll get started on translations.